Joining us now in studio, the former Israeli special envoy for combating anti-Semitism and the delegitimization of Israel, Noah Tishbe. She turned to advocacy over a decade ago, founding Act for Israel, a leading digital platform for pro-Israel activism. Her social media videos on why the attacks against Israel should matter to all Americans have gone viral. She's also the author of a book titled Israel, a simple guide to the most misunderstood country on earth. Noah, thank you for being here. Uh, native of Tel Aviv, what can you tell us about your friends, your family, your fellow Israelis and what they are feeling right now, what, 12 days after this attack? So first of all, thank you so much for having me. This is a shock for the Israeli people, and this is a shock for the Jewish community, and should be a shock for anybody who believes in Western values, frankly. Um, this is extraordinary, extraordinarily personal for me, because I have nieces and nephews who are on the front line and actually fighting the fight um, on the ground. But in terms of the Jewish community, what you have to understand is that we've been warning about anti-Semitism on the rise for a very long time. Every single member of the Jewish community around America and the world has been feeling threatened, has been feeling unsafe, and we've been talking about this for a long time. Anti-Semitism is uh, manifested on the right, on the left, and in radical Islam, and it's very easy to identify it on the right, because it sounds like Jews are using lasers to burn California. So it's very easy for us to be like, oh, that's anti-Semitic, right? But what was very hard to identify is anti-Semitism on the left, which is what we're seeing right now, which is actually anti-Zionism. So this vilification and dehumanization and demonization of Israel such that we have desensitized ourselves to the pain of Israelis, such that Israelis, after going through what we've been through, which is really one of the most sadistic massacres in the history of the world, People around the, the, the West, people from Harvard University to the streets of New York to the streets of Sydney and London, are holding rallies in support of Hamas and saying, yeah, we see this massacre, but like, what did Israel do to deserve this? And this is something that is extraordinary, extraordinarily disturbing for the Israeli people on the ground. So, this, and this has exposed so much of that, in some ways, sort of cloaked anti-Semitism that we've seen. It's all been thrust out in the open in the last so. week. So uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu has <laughs> vowed that Hamas will be wiped out that every member of Hamas is a dead man. Mm -hmm. um, can you speak to how important this moment right now is, even in the, the scope of Israeli history? So for the world, this is important, because what Hamas is, is it's ISIS, it's the Taliban, it's Al-Qaeda, it's the same um, ideology of radicalism that is threatening to take all of us. So when in Iran, they chant death for Israel and death to America. And they're, this is not hyperbole, they're not making this up. They actually mean this and they're making plans to do this. And Israel is the first line of defense. This should be extraordinarily personal for anybody. And you have to understand, when these demonstrations are out on the streets, that's not liberalism. When these demonstrations pro Hamas, that's not progressivism. BDS movement, the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement against Israel is not about freeing Palestinians. Does anybody think that Hamas is about freeing Palestinians? We should all read the reports about how they're not letting their people evacuate Gaza and be very concerned. Look, Israel gave Hamas and gave the Gazan people two days to evacuate. Hamas didn't give Israel two minutes. So this is the intentionality of this is very important to look at when you think of what they did, the brutality and the intentionality that they did too. And I'm sorry to be graphic, but I'm actually not. The slaughtering of babies, the burning them alive, the handcuffing them. And I have people that were on the ground that are saying that the stories are even worse than what's being reported. The brutality, when you actually do this, this is very different to the uh, reality, the horrific realities of collateral damage of war. And this is the difference. There's an intentionality of killing. And then when they go home, Hamas militants, Hamas terrorists, they're not nice to their own people. They're not progressives. They're so, not trying to free anybody. So this terror t attack comes against the backdrop of a rise in anti-Semitic violence yeah. and speech throughout the world. The White House statistics say anti-Semitic hate crimes were up 25 percent last year here in the United States. We've seen similar rises across certain parts of Europe, too. Uh, to what do you attribute that, and what can be done about it? Not drop, went up. Yeah, it surged. It went up. Yes. Yeah, it surged. Um, I think there's been an erosion. People uh, tend to forget throughout history that anti-Semitism is the oldest form of of hate and discrimination that's still being practiced today. So you can go back and see anti-Semitic speech like thousands of years old. It's as old 
as the Jews, and today's anti-Semitism is manifested with anti-Zionism. That's literally what it is, because there has been, throughout history, okay, the world has been used to blaming whatever it is that polite society hates the most on the Jew, right? So the Jew was blamed in, you know, early in the days of Christianity as the, the Christ killer, um, later on in Nazism as, as the race polluter, in days of uh, um, the, the, the Soviet Union, they're either the capitalist pig or the communist, depends on who you're looking at. And right now in our polite society, the worst thing to be is racist, colonialist, and apartheidist. And our, your viewers, and just think for yourselves, what have you been made to believe about Israel? All these lies, like people at home actually thought that Israel is committing ethnic cleansing. And this is nothing but subconscious biases that you have around the Jewish people that then affect your opinion of Israel. So you're from Tel Aviv. Yeah. According to everyone we have spoken to in the last nine or 10 days, Israel has been traumatized as it has never been traumatized before. People for the first time are fearful and have strong feelings about what the government did not do. And it's all encapsulated in the phrase, nobody came. The army did not come mm. to protect them, to save them. So my question to you is, and you may not know the answer because I, we don't know the answer. Why has not the prime minister, Bibi Netanyahu, stood before the cameras and said, I apologize to you? We failed you. I wish I knew the answer to that. This is a question that literally every single Israeli is asking themselves because head of the military, the Shin Bet, a lot of other politicians have actually said that. We're all waiting for that apology, but later. There's a saying in Israel, at 6 p.m. after the war, which means we'll take care of it when we need to take care of it. And that is what needs to be done. I think the, the responsibility um, is obviously at the leader of the country. I am sure he's well aware, aware of it, but we're gonna deal with that later. Right now, Israel needs to win this war. The Israeli people are extraordinarily united. It's kind of unbelievable to watch right now, because up until now, there was a lot of divide. There was the uh, judicial overhaul, which I spoke up against as well, and lost my job with the Israeli government, which I'm very happy to do, because I believe that you always have to be on the right side of history, right? So. Right now, we need to take care of unity and we need to take care of, of winning this war. And the Israeli people that were divided about politics up until October 7th have united in ways that we haven't seen before. And it's sad that this is what was needed, but, uh, but this is happening, so. How important is it, do you believe, for Israel to keep track of civilians in Gaza and be, so that you are not Hamas? In other words, you are not killing civilians that you are not of course unintentionally uh, on your side intentionally on theirs but do you think it's important that israel allows time for the civilians the, uh, of gaza to move out before they move in absolutely it's important absolutely and this is why israel gave notice look every this is not about revenge this is about security and sovereignty which every american needs to understand right so israel gave the gazan people two days to evacuate this is a humanitarian thing to do. And I implore everybody who's watching this right now to read about what Hamas is doing to stop the evacuation. So Hamas declared a war on Israel, but by that they declared a war on themselves and they declared a war on their own people. They know that they have sentenced their people to death. They want this. We've been saying this for so long. Hamas and those radical organizations they don't think like you and I. They don't think the same way. They are looking for as many casualties as they possibly can. They're looking for the visuals. This is why they filmed themselves torturing Israelis. So they don't think the way that we do, and we need to, the Western world need to be united in this fight against this ideology, and it's happening right now at the forefront in Israel. Former Israeli special envoy for combating anti-Semitism and the delegitimization of Israel, Noah Tishbi. Noah, thanks for being here today. We appreciate it. Thank you Thank for you. having me.